Greetings everyone, Irish Trekkie, back another Star Trek The Official Starships Collection issue review from Eagle Moss. This time we are featuring the next community driven ship in the collection. We have the USS Aventine. And again, I am equally proud to talk and deliver my review of this ship because again, we, collectively us, made this happen. And thanks to Eagle Moss for sticking by their commitment and uh, bringing us this great looking ship. So let's put the box to one side. I know I'm just teasing you. Let's have a look at this magazine and see what goodies lay inside, shall we? So class of the Aventine is Vesta, crew 750, length 675, 72 meters even. And uh, yes, it has quite some slipstream. So this is an advanced, advanced ship. Again, a ship designed post Voyager you know, more advanced than um, a lot of the ships in the fleet. And again, just a very um, suitable chassis to test a lot of advanced uh, Federation technology. So we got a great graphic of this sexy ship. Um, I know you like what you like, but you'd be hard pushed not to say that this is a beautiful ship. Um, interesting paint design, um, but I'm sure there's reasons to that inside the magazine. And uh, yeah, let's open up and see what goodies lay inside. So it's a multi-mission explorer. It can go warp 9.9999 plus. So she is a speed demon. Um, Captain by Dexter and Esri Dax. We have torpedo launchers. We have type 12 phase, phaser cannons. Um, so she can, yeah, she can take care of herself, to be honest with you. Uh, we have three sections in this one. Uh, we have Imagining the USS Aventine, Designing the Ship, and About the USS Aventine as well. Um, nice close-up of the nacelles there as well. Shuttle bay and uh, or ventral drive section there too. Very interesting um, sensor palette here as well. And they look like the weapons ports, but um, we'll get into that detail as well. What a graphic. Look at the lines of this ship. Come on. This is a good-looking ship, and I love... The stellar background that it's given as well. Um, the Aventine, commanded by Esri Dax, used several experiment technologies, including a slipstream drive. Yes, so again, a lot of technology was brought back from the Delta Quadrant. Uh, here's a little piece on Voyager as well. But I won't go into too much detail. You know, this is a, a very interesting read. So we have our escape pods, phaser strip array, which is nice. Defensive shielding. Bizarre collectors, navigational deflector, formation lights. It's our main shuttle bay, which I like just up here as well. Great lines, great lines on the ship as well. And I love the back swept nacelles too. Does it remind you of any particular new ship? I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> the Starfleet design philosophy. So, um, after the USS Avertine model um, debuted in David Mack's Star Trek, Destiny trilogy, fans started to speculate about exactly what it looked like. Of course, we're Trekkies, or Trekkers, whatever you'd like to label yourself. But um, when a new ship is talked about, you know, your mind goes wild. What's it like? What's it do? What's its history? And so on and so forth. Um, so great render here, actually, in relation to the Aventine. So again, it had quantum slipstream, um, decent sized ship as well, you know, like 700... And 50 crew, 670 plus uh, meters long. You know, it's it's no slouch. And uh, again, totally multi-purpose as well. So again, this ship was designed um, by uh, Mark uh, Rademacher. I think I pronounced that right. And, um, you know, it has an interesting lineage as well from the USS Spirit right through to the Vesta class. Um, but again, the ship was born visually in relation to you know david max book similar to um the previous titan so mark mentions here that uh, he wanted it to be different in profile so it doesn't get mixed up by the casual reader and um you know he followed some of the design cues from uh, david mack in the book you know it being like a shark it being like a shark you know um traveling through slipstream you know that's a dynamic you know not forgiving a bit of space so again having these smooth lines um, and you can kind of see the nautical influences here as well 
What other ships have we seen uh, in the Slipstream um, Voyager? You know, again, blended body, the Dauntless. And now I know you're going to say the Borg, but these guys were the masters of uh, Slipstream. So um, I'm sure they had ways around integrity and stuff like that as well. But for the Mir Federation and other aliens, um, it seemed to be uh, sleek ships were best performing in Quantum Slipstream. So... Uh, here we have a little piece on the nacelle configuration, so where the pylons are. Uh, nice declassified <laughs> material here. So the Aventine had multiple layers of armour. Um, so again, yeah, that goes down to the different um, paint uh, applications. So again, the armour plating here as well. So you're going to need extra armour for combat purposes, but also I'm sure for slipstream navigation and so on and so forth. And uh, for slipstream navigation as well, there's reasoning behind the deflector that it's a chromaton deflector. Because the ship travels so fast, they designed a navigation system that can actually look into the future to uh, detect hazards in its um, travel path as well. So I thought that was cool kind of, uh, you know, reasoning to the design as well. So um, pretty good. Um, I just like the dynamic nature of just even the paint and detailing alone. Uh, structurally, I think it's very elegant, but I just love like these panels and the the, sh the armor design as well. Um, a little bit of a departure from uh, Star Trek ships, but um, I think pretty nice actually. Pretty, pretty nice. And um, so we have a good bit on imagining um, the Aventine here as well. I won't go into too much detail. There we have David Mack um, reading one of his books at the moment, Desperate Hours, um, the somewhat prequel to uh, the Star Trek Discovery. Um, it's pretty good. I recommend you uh, listen to it or read it. Um, here we have one of the images from the Shifts of the Line calendar as well. So that was kind of the genesis of um, that series that he was doing as well, which is pretty cool. So here we have Destiny, The Fall, um, Typhoon Pact as well. So that's the magazine. For the Aventine. Um, obviously there's no next ship here as well. These were two of the community ships. Which is great. So let's end out on the back graphic. And let's actually have a look at the Aventine shall we. So Aventine. She's long. She's big. Well let's see what the model is like shall we. But everything looks okay. For those interested. I have a 3036A slash A. Got this pretty early. On the web store, uh, USS Aventine NCC 82602, centrally mounted with an interesting rake on it, so again, should give us a nice uh, mounting position there for the ship. But let's put this to one side, let's have a look at the model. She's very light, so die cast just here, plastic underneath as well, but she's slender, she, she's very similar to the Enterprise E um, in size and form. But uh, yeah, let's actually get as close as we can to the ship and uh, let's see. So we had that very interesting um, paint application. So again, the different layers of shielding with kind of second tone paint applications there as well. Or nav lights and again, or CS units. Here we have our deflector. Seems to be a bit rubbed off. Let me get that closed up there. We're kind of missing some of the red bits there, but you can see the tiny, tiny decals there as well. USS Aventine and the ship registry. So moving down, we can see, again, windows are painted on. We have our uh, escape pods, our bridge section. Shush! And then we have our data engines leading into our input sections here as well. A lot of windows all the way down the main blended body of it. And here's the shuttle bay as well. So again, we have very, very fine decals here as well. And we even have the detailing that was kind of missing out on the Titan as well. Just that lead into the shuttle bay. And uh, you can kind of see if you can kind of make it out there. I can barely make it out myself. But, uh, hang on, would it zoom in? I'll see if I can zoom in a little bit post-process on this. But it looks like it says um, USS Aventine there as well. So uh, here we have some auxiliary 
units here as well for the engines and then those really cool nacelles as well so we have the buzzard collectors and uh, no huge amount of blue through here on the nacelles as well but again it has a very advanced warp system but um primarily slipstream as well which would be you know accessed by the deflector which it's a little muted here so i think this is one of the biggest misses on the ship you can see the mold part is in there but this should not be blue um that should be gray with some additional detailing in there as well so for such a big feature um it's kind of okay but there's a lot of room to maneuver there there's a lot of room to maneuver now um we get some fine details uh decals there again with some extra um molding too which is cool so we have two deflectors um i can't remember what that part there is as well but um did we have a ship profile in the magazine? I must check that again. Maybe my mind kind of blanked out. <laughs> I was so I was so in a hurry to kind of get my hands in the ship. Um, I love this paint detailing here. I love the kind of black, kind of graphite, uh, severity in in relation to the kind of the duck egg and the grey of it as well. But um, again, everything is nice and clean. Uh, Starship USS Saventine, United Federation of Planets. And again, a lot of detail, they kind of, not so much, well, it is kind of aztec as well, but it's more kind of, well, yeah, it is kind of aztec I would I would say. Um, so here we have some ventral detailing on the nacelles, very far raked back, but I think that's cool. I think it lends itself to the design of the ship. Um, very long, very thin, as you can see. We compare it to a ship on the line as well, but um, everything seems kind of straight. I, I don't think I have any alignment issues. This nacelle looks to be a little bit kind of more raised up. Uh, if I can kind of hold it like that, you can kind of just make it out a little bit, but nothing too crazy. But I actually like it. I must admit, I do like it. I'm glad this, like where else are you going to get an Aventine out of? Unless you 3D print, <laughs> which I do not. Uh, not yet. Uh, pipe dream way down the line but um yeah i like it i do like the aventine the design i'm a big fan of the paint applications on this as well and i think overall eagle moss did a good job on the paint applications there's just a couple of misses i love that detailing just down the spine of the ship as well we have the escape pods you know docking collars or you know fuel transfer systems or whatever they may be and uh yeah Nice placement for the shuttle bay as well. I think that's kind of cool. Because I do like the way it just kind of closes off, pinches down, and then narrows to a nice point. Kind of uh, Excelsior-esque as well. But that's cool. But that kind of shares something similar with the Titan too, which is nice. You can kind of see some of that lineage there. But let's compare it to a ship in the line and put on our base and uh, wrap up the review. Now, I know we looked at the enterprise in the last video as well but i just thought it would be a good comparison in this one too just for the scale and uh the design philosophy as well because this is a more advanced ship than the sovereign but you can kind of see some of the aspects that have been brought over and some of the differences as well and it's amazing how you know changing the nacelles can make to a ship you know the narrowing of certain areas the enhancing of other areas as well can uh, totally flip around because again designing a starship you're not reinventing the wheel you're just you know tweaking the ideas and it's a very hard thing to do um but it's amazing the impact that, that can have and uh, yeah i think the vesta class the aventine sits very well into the star trek timeline as regards to technology I'm curious to know what you guys think We'll wrap it up there for this issue review. Uh, again, let me know what you thought of the Aventine. Did you sign the petition? Are you glad that it's finally here? Were you able to grab one before they sold out? Um, I'm sure they'll be back in. Um, or maybe, maybe not, actually. Um, but see if you can get one if you're interested. But um, anyway, I've been your local Irish Trekkie. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. So take it easy. And goodbye.